Hi, this is Lady Shell, and I'm here to give you a tutorial on how to create a character using Fantasy Grounds. I'm going to be doing them um, on each of the main classes, so I'm going to start at the beginning with Barbarian. To, op to uh, start your character, get your blank character sheet, you're going to open the Characters tab over here and click the plus button and then close this back. Now I use uh, several of Rob Tui's 5e coding effects in this and you don't have to use them but I'm going to recommend the following four that you get would be this background and class equipment bundles, the class features, the race traits, and the spell coding. And then I'm also using the player's handbook if you don't have the player's handbook, you can use the SRD and to access these you would load, scroll, 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 <laughs> looking for SRD, well, there's the, these would be the ones that you would load, these 5e SRD. To load them, you would just click the load button and when they are loaded, it will look like a book. I'm not going to load it because I don't need them. I'm using the player's handbook. So I'm going to get out of here. So basically the four that I told you of Rob Chewy's modules plus the player's handbook are the only ones that you need. When you are in this uh, library, also cl click this create PC button and then if you are using the background class and equipment bundles like I am, you will want to also enable the parcels because it's needed in to uh, use that. Okay, let's call our barbarian a name. Barbs. <laughs> okay, it's important to use the correct order when you make your character. The first thing you want to do is your abilities. We're going to be using our standard array, which is 15, 14, 13. Whoops. Let's try typing that again. <clears throat> 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Okay. These numbers can be put in any order, but these are the only numbers that you're allowed to use using the standard array. A barbarian's main feature is strength, so I'm going to give him the 15 and his strength. The second most important is the con, so I'm going to put the 14 in con. And I'm going to give him 13 in dex, 12 in wisdom, 10 in intelligence, and charisma is going to be 8. So not very charismatic. I've already decided the barbarian, I've also desired ra race of um, dwarf, but um, the second thing that you do after your abilities is your background. To choose a background, you just click on the banner on the right hand side and choose a background. I'm going to make him a sailor. To access that, I just grab the shield and I put it in the background. And you'll see in the chat window, it tells you the things that you got for picking this background. I also have saved the sailor information into my save keys down here. All I did was drag the shield down to the appropriate spot and it saves it. And then to get it again, I would just single click it and it will open back up. So we got our background, we got our abilities. The third thing you want to do is your race. So you open the race tab. Already said I wanted to be a dwarf. I'm going to put dwarf in here. Close the races. And there are two types of dwarfs that I can be using the player's handbook. There are other different versions of many of the other races using different books, but I'm using just the player's handbook because most likely that's what a new player would have, hopefully, maybe not. If not, it would be the SRD. <laughs> okay, 
Hill Dwarf is good if you were making a cleric because it gives you additional wisdom. Mountain Dwarf is good for a fighter or barbarian or anything that does, you know, melee fighting because it gives you strength and constitution bonuses for picking this. And that is exactly what you need as a barbarian. So Mountain Dwarf it is. We click it and we see all the different things that it added to the race as for picking the race rather. Okay, so we've got our Mountain Dwarf. You see it increased my strength and increased my con. Next, I want to take the class. I'm going to drag over the Barbarian. Close this down. And it's asking me which two skills, though, I want to add to my uh, proficiency. And you see, before when I picked the... I believe it was from the... It was from my... Um, background that I got the athletics and perception skills, the sailor background. So I do not want to pick the same ones. I don't want to pick an intimidation because it has really low charisma and intimidation is based on charisma. So that probably wouldn't be a good one. We'll pick nature and survival. Click the check button. Now he's proficient in four different skills. Next thing is the abilities. I'm going to use some of these abilities when I do the coding for my actions tab. So I'm going to open these up. Rage and armor training. Oh, that's already here. So you already says you have light and medium. I don't need to open that up. Dwarven resilience is a dwarven trait. So that's a racial trait. And stone cunning is also a dwarven trait. Tool proficiency, it says that I get um, proficiency in either smiths, brewers, or mason's tools. This tells me what armor and shields I can use. This tells me I get navigator's tools and a water vessel. And it says I could use simple weapons and martial weapons. And my languages, I know common and dwarvish. Um, I'm going to level my Barbarian up. To do that, I'm going to click on this little shield. I mean, not shield. This little uh, hourglass. And this shield, I'm going to drag it up. Drag it off and back. And it goes to level 2. Drag it off and back. And it goes to level 3. And it wants me to pick my archetype, which I'm going to take the Berserker archetype. And check close that down I'm going to have additional abilities here because of that I'm going to get danger sense I'm going to get frenzy path of the berserker just talks about what that path is rage I've already got rage reckless attack now I got that And I have, well, on armor defense, there is no coding for it. Just says that you, when you're not wearing armor, your armor class will be 14 plus your dex modifier and your con modifier. And then you can also use a shield and get this benefit. But my character, the, be the um, inventory that you get for the character, it doesn't allow you a shield, so I'm not going to add a shield. Uh, let's see, we have the armor training, the armor training, resilience, stone cunning, and the tool proficiencies up there. Didn't add anything there. It did uh, say that it gave us navigator's tools and a water vessel. I'm going to go in inventory, which would our, be our next step. This is not part of the mod that I'm using because these are additional things that aren't included into the um basic what you get because because this is based on my sailor background that I get the boat and the um uh what was the other thing called the shore navigator's tools okay so you would do that separate I also am going to want to give myself two potions of healing 
which you'll see later on when I use that. And I'm going to type boat. And I'm going to give myself a rowboat. And I'm going to type navigator. And I'm going to move that over. And then the rest is all going to be done using the mod. So what you do with this mod is you will load it. I change it to this is the name of the mod. And I'm looking for sailor in this list. Here's my sailor. Just take the shield, drag it over. And then I want to look for barbarian. Take it, drag it over. There, our inventory is complete. Next thing you want to do is your notes. This is why I saved my sailor, because down here there are some tables that you can roll for your skills. You do not have to do this. You can type your skills what, whatever you want them to be for your, what is your ideal, your bond, your flaw, your personality trait. This is all role playing. This is like how you want to role play your character when you have it in the game. Then you're going to have your gender, your age, your height, your weight, and the medium size is already uh, done from one of the other things you pick. Appearance, same thing. You would type in whatever you want to save for how you look. And notes would be your backstory, where you came from, how did you become a sailor, do you have any family, are you an orphan, that kind of thing. Again, role playing. But I'm going to roll for my traits here. I'm just going to take whatever it gives me. To grab this, you would just left click and drag it to the area you want to put it in. Into the area you want to put it. <laughs> You're giving me a bad example program. There you go. Okay. Ideal is next. <clears throat> Bond. And your flaw. Whoops. Where's my flaw? Okay, so now we're finished with our role playing area. The next tab is your um, this has to do with the Adventures Guild. You would have like a number that would go here in your faction. Then you would paste in your sh what you do in your Adventures League game. We're not doing that. These are my weapons. It's already coded. It gives you what your um, attack ability is. I've got a plus five on my attack. And this is the damage and uh, I remember that I had two hand axes, so I'm going to tell it two here. It's going to give me these two bubbles. So if I use these to throw, which is what this symbol is, see, this is a throne. This is melee. And then the third um, visual option would be your ranged weapon. That would be if you had a crossbow or a, or a short bow, long bow, etc. So this is if you're using the javelin as a stabbing, piercing thing. And this is if you're using the javelin as a thrown weapon. And there was four of them. I'm going to put four there. Next, I'm going to open a power. Now, power is basically just like the separator. So for my header, I'm going to type what I want the header to say, which I want to put consumables because I want to keep track of my water skin, my rations, my torches, and those healing potions that I put in there. Consumables. And then you click in another box. And then what I want to do is I want to open up the spells because, again, I'm using one of Rob's 5e coding packages and even though these aren't spells these are uh, that's where they that's where the coding is kept um, I need four things I need my 
torches, I need my rations, so I'm double clicking here to get the green plus. Double clicking, green plus, now I've got my four things. I can type in healing potions, and I can type in torches, and I can type in rations, and I can type in Ah, oh, what was the fourth thing? Water skin. Okay. Now, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go into preparation mode. Now, we need to tell it these are consumed, so they are once used items. They are not daily. Daily means that I'll get a new water skin every day, which I don't. So, and it's not long rest. It's a want. All of these will be once. So you're going to double click until you see them say once. You have one water skin. You have 10 rations. You have 10 torches. And you have one. Oh, I'm sorry. We have two healing potions. One water skin. Okay. Now we're coded. Now I'm going to add a second section. My new section is going to be, oh, wait a minute. What did I do? I added there. New section. We add the power. Now I've got a new power. I'm going to call these standard actions. Okay. And over here in this top box, I'm going to type the word action. And these are the actions that I'm going to be dragging over. So I'm going to be clicking into this blank box, dodge, help, hide, and ready. Okay. Now I can get, it always leaves this placeholder up at the top, so we're going to always delete. When we're fi finished adding things that we want to add to this section. Then I click on the power glasses so that it only uses up one space. Okay, now I want to do a third one, power. This is going to be for my racial traits. Because I'm a dwarf, I'm allowed this, I get this Dwarven Resilience, and I get Stone Cunning down here, these two things. And to find those in this list, I'm going to go to Source. I'm going to click Dwarf. And I'm going to click over Dwarven Resilience and Stone Cunning. this space now I have my different sections and I can click on barbarian now because now I want to do one more here it is up here and these are going to be my class features this is the features that I get because I'm a barbarian. Click over here. And we're going to change this from dwarf to barbarian. And you'll see these are all of the different things that you get as a barbarian. We have, that's why I kept these open so I didn't have to go back and forth in the tab. We have... Reckless attack, right here, drag it. We have frenzy, drag it. We have danger sense, drag it. 
and we have rage. Drag it. Delete the spacer. Tidy it up. There, now we have all of our features. The one thing I forgot to do was this tool proficiency. Because it says that we're proficient with these Smith's tools, Brewer's tools, or Mason's tools, I wanted to go to the Ability tab, and I wanted to make a notation on here that we get right here, tool proficiency. I'm going to say we're, we're good at Brewer's tools. This just, uh, if the DM was wondering which one that you picked, then that's why I put it here. So, actually, I'm going to put it in parentheses. Okay. And on the Skills tab, because we're proficient in it, we need to add it to our list of things that we're proficient in. Helps if I click it. There we go. This will give me a blank spot. I'm going to type in Brewer Supplies. Did I type that right? Okay. I want to give it, make the star gold. It alphabetizes once you leave the area here. And we're going to make it based on your wisdom. Okay, so now you're proficient in brewer supplies. I'm going to close that. And let's see. Did I forget anything? I don't think I did. Got all that. Got all this. I think we're set. We don't have a picture, but um, keep in mind that your picture will not, if you wanted to save this, that this would not export. But if you do want to save this, say I was on someone's table and I finished making my character and I wanted to save it, in the chat window, if you type backslash save, how about backslash save character? No, I guess it's the same. Okay, say. Anyway, this will save the character in this campaign, and later on I can go to manage character on my own table, and I could look up this particular table that I made it on, and I could get it from there, and download it from there, and export it, and then I could print it out if I wanted to use it in a game, like if I wanted to do a game at a friend's house, and I brought my um, character that I made, then I would have it that way. So I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial and I thank you for watching. Bye-bye.